In this video I will show you how you can use ChatGPT for statistics. For instance, if you are a student and writing your thesis. What is ChatGPT? It's a program based on artificial intelligence or more specifically on a language model. And this program has been produced by training a large neural network on an extremely large data set of text. For instance, books, articles and websites. And in the case of statistics, of course, books, articles and websites about statistics. You can find a link to ChatGPT in the description of this video. You put in your query down here and click on this button. And after a couple of seconds waiting time, the program starts producing text. Now you could put in the next query you have to know that the answers build on each other. So if you put in the next query down here, the program will take into account your first query. If you don't want that because now you want to research a different topic, I'd recommend clicking on new chat. And by clicking here, you can clear the conversations. So now let's look at some examples that can be helpful when researching statistics. ChatGPT can be very useful when you want to write R code and you don't know which package and which function to use. So in this example, write R code for, and then you put in what you want to accomplish with R. In this case, for a CFA, for a confirmatory factor analysis with four factors. And as a result, often you get the code, which you could copy and paste, and an explanation for the code. It's important to note the code isn't always 100% correct. So what I'm doing is this. I use ChatGPT and then I know which package and which function. And then to make sure that I get the function exactly right, I use the help functionality of R to see which parameters in which order I have to use for this function. We can do the same for SPSS syntax. And sometimes, as in this case, ChatGPT shows us different alternative methods you could use to accomplish your goal in this case recoding an item. For SPSS menus, ChatGPT isn't really that helpful because menus aren't text-based but more graphically based. And good tutorials in most cases have screenshots, but ChatGPT works on text. So when I've tried to get information in which menu I would find something in SPSS, the answers weren't as good as the answers for syntax or code. And of course, you could use this type of query for other syntax-based statistics programs, for instance, M+, or Stata, if you want to use Stata with syntax instead of the menus. But ChatGPT isn't only helpful for writing statistical code, but for other statistical questions as well, especially if you want to learn a new technique, as in this example, what is rich regression? And then, more often than not, you get a very concise description of this method. And here again, you can't trust the results 100%. So you should follow up with looking at scientific sources. But I think it's a very good starting point if you want to jump into a new method. What I like as a follow-up query is this. What are key concepts in? Because then you get the key concepts of a technique or of a theory. And in most cases, an easy to understand explanation for those concepts. I think you can use this outside of statistics as well. For instance, with the psychological theories. What are key concepts in self-determination theory? And then you get a list of different key concepts. And if you're writing about self-determination theory, you know you sh probably should include all those concepts in your writing. Currently, there are some limits to the use of ChatGPT for research. It's not really that helpful for researching literature. You could try to queries like what are the key papers about bootstrapping and regression? And you would get a result. You would get a list of sources with comments, with a very short summary, what that source is about. The problem is, in my experience, some of those sources don't exist. They are simply inventions of the program. By combining elements of sources from different papers or books into one plausible looking but not real source information. The second thing I would use ChatGPT for is text production, because you run a certain risk 
that ChatGPT uses sentences from other works without you knowing that those are quotations. And you could get into real trouble with that. But for learning statistics, I really do like ChatGPT a lot. So that's it for a short overview about ChatGPT and statistics. Thanks for watching the video.